We continue on breaking news this morning. Sources say Nikki Haley will suspend her presidential campaign, leaving Donald Trump as the last major Republican candidate. A lot more to discuss with this, so let's bring in our Joe St. George, who is live in Washington, D.C. Joe, good to have you with us again talking about the impact. We, we touched on this yesterday, but what are really the impacts of this decision? Well, this wasn't as much of a surprise it, uh, based on the results of Super Tuesday, which is what we saw last night. It was not what the Haley campaign drew up several months ago. She wanted to be much more competitive in a state like Virginia. She wanted to win more states on Super Tuesday than just Vermont. And, and the reality is, is that there was there was no path forward. And it, now for up until this point, you could say that Haley didn't really have that much of a path. But from a math standpoint, many of the contests haven't taken place. The delegate avalanche that occurs on Super Tuesday hadn't occurred yet, so there was still a reason to pick up the phone, ask donors for more money. With former President Trump only 200 delegates mathematically away from clinching the nomination, that path became uh, null and void uh, for all intents and purposes. And that's why we're getting this, this news this morning, breaking just within the last 40 minutes or so. Scripps News confirming uh, that Nikki Haley suspending her campaign. She'll be speaking at 10 a.m. this morning in South Carolina. Now there is a bigger question here. The bigger question is, does Haley attempt to unite the Republican Party under the banner of former President Donald Trump? Haley ran a pretty critical campaign these last few weeks of former President Trump. Uh, there were a lot of attacks on both sides, by the way. Uh, does she pull a Ron DeSantis and endorse him? Uh, or is there more division? And, and I'll give you one example of why this matters. In Michigan, a state that's going to be one of those swing states that decide this election this year, 300,000 Republicans voted for her in the Michigan primary uh, a few weeks back. Where do they go now? Uh, does Haley say something to bring them back to the Trump orbit? Or are those voters gettable for a President Joe Biden campaign? Are we on the verge of just a demographic shift with political parties in this country where you have the moderate Haley Republican voter maybe go into the Biden campaign and you have some working class traditional uh, Democratic voters being more enthralled with the Trump campaign? These are some of the big questions as we now officially shift into the general election mode this morning. Yeah, big questions, no doubt. And now, Joe, that this is looking like a rematch of 2020's presidential race, what are some of the key takeaways for both of them from last night? Both are vulnerable candidates. For all intents and purposes, both are incumbents to some degree. Former President Trump had the job before. He's attempting to do something that only Grover Cleveland in American history has done, and that's be president, no longer be president, and be president again. Cleveland was able to pull it off in the 1800s. Can Trump pull it off here in 2024? Uh, we shall see. Uh, Biden is vulnerable among, just as I mentioned, Trump has some vulnerabilities with moderate Republicans. There's still a number of the base, many young people who are frustrated with President Biden over his, over his policies with Israel and Gaza. Some are upset with the climate. Some don't think he's doing more for progressives in the, in the country. The one benefit that both of these campaigns have now is time. The Trump campaign has time to woo, to sway the moderate Haley voter. I think his VP pick will be critical when it comes to that, whoever that ends up being. And Biden's team has time to compare and contrast the policies of Trump and Biden's one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Uh, and the Biden campaign has told me uh, informally uh, that, look, they believe that when the spotlight shines on Biden and Trump exclusively, that many of these Democrats who are upset with Biden are going to ultimately come back to the Democratic Party. Uh, so we shall see the general election shifts into another gear this morning.